OK, there's no tougher start then to World Cup qualifying than this. Wales taking on the world's top-ranked side, Belgium, tonight live on Sky Sports. Maybe sound daunting, but Wales are unbeaten in the last four meetings, including that famous quarter-final win at Euro 2016. Gareth Bell was part of the team that day. He knows there's an expectation now on them to reach a first World Cup since 1958. I think uh, over the last maybe six, seven years, we've... We've gotten better and better and we've qualified for two major tournaments now. So um, the next step is, is to keep qualifying and uh, not just doing it now and again. So, um, yeah, we have an expectation to, to qualify and um, we'll be doing our, our best to try and do that. Every player would, would be lying if they didn't, if they said they didn't want to be playing in a World Cup. So, um, yeah, it probably is our last chance to, to qualify for a World Cup, us all the group. And, um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things we're, we're going to give everything we can to... Uh, to try and do that. What is it about Wales and Belgium? Um, I don't know. I think uh, we've played them a lot of times. Um, yeah, it's maybe with their bogey team. I don't know. But um, we always we always put a shift in no matter who we play. Um, yeah. So obviously we know they're they're a very good team. They've got a lot of attacking talent on the pitch, but um, they also have weaknesses as well. So um, yeah, we'll uh, we obviously have a game plan. We've been working on it for for the last few days, and we'll go there, give a hundred percent like we always do for the country. OK, let's get Mona ahead of tonight's game and speak live to Geraint Hughes. So, Geraint, look, you've been with the Wales squad in the bubble this week, but you're not with them now, or you're not with them tonight. Just explain why. Uh, yeah, it's COVID and uh, the numerous bubbles that are going on. As you explained, I, I have been in the uh, the Welsh team camp in, in a bubble there. They have now gone to Belgium. They went to Belgium yesterday afternoon. Uh, I and uh, the cameraman unable to, to travel to, to Belgium. So we are staying back in the UK. I will go back in to the Welsh team bubble later in the week uh, ahead of the games they've got coming up against Mexico and the Czech Republic. But because I am in a bubble, I can't come into the bubble where you are right now. So I have to stay a little bit away from you. I feel like the most tested man in the UK at the moment. I'm just going to be having my sixth test in four days very shortly. I can assure everybody that the five I've had so far have all, all returned negatively. So uh, no frivolity there. Now we know how serious it is and how it has to be taken. But yeah, all negative tests. But it's for me to be in various bubbles and to be in various bubbles safely. Yeah, you're in your own bubble. That's good to hear that you are negative, though. Brilliant news. Look, we heard from Gareth Bales. Uh, Gareth Bale, I should say, not Bales. He's not plural. Uh, just a moment ago. Look, as always, he's Wales talisman, of course, um, and a leader. But with, of course, no Ryan Giggs and Aaron Ramsey also out. How more important do you feel his role is right now? Do you know, that was probably one of the best Freudian slips you could ever make there <laughs> yes. because I think if, if they could clone Gareth Bale and have a team full of Bells, what a wonderful idea that would be. 1-11, to 11, uh, Gareth Bale. I think they would absolutely bite your hand off for that. And I think they're going to they're gonna potentially need something like that because you, you've laid it out you know, pretty clear there. It, it, it's Wales have... So far, under Ryan Giggs, obviously he's not in this camp, wasn't in the November camp as well, but it's his philosophy, which Robert Page and Albert Stoivenberg, who's very familiar to Arsenal fans, he's a coach under Mikel Arteta as well. They have this philosophy way of playing, and it blends experience with a lot of younger players coming th uh, through. You know, the likes of Joe Roden at Tottenham, Nico Williams at, uh, at Liverpool as well, getting that blend right. What they're doing with the loss of Aaron Ramsey, who couldn't make it uh, due to some injury he picked up for Juventus, Ben Davis, the Tottenham uh, defender, as well. He pulled out the squad yesterday morning. That's a huge blow. But they've lost two senior players, not just really, really good players, but senior players, experienced players that can control, I suppose, what sometimes is the uncontrollable, have that experience to pass on to the younger players. All that has got to come onto the shoulders of Gareth Bell because everyone looks to him not just to do what he needs to do on the pitch, but it's about what he does off the pitch as well. Calm the nerves, make sure everybody's in, in the right place mentally, physically as well, before they actually even go onto a pitch. So, so much more Gareth Bale is, is going to have to take on because he hasn't got his lieutenants in the likes of Aaron Ramsey and Ben Davis. One good thing to say is, and it'd be, it'd be interesting to see if he does start, the uh, uh, Joe Allen back in the side, uh, uh, the Welsh Pirlo, as he's, as he's mm -hmm. called it, in the camp as well. How crucial he is to come back into the side because he brings that experience, that know-how. He's been out uh, of international, uh, the international scene for some time due to nine months out with a ruptured Achilles tendon. But he could be key alongside Gareth Bale for just getting that experience right this evening in Belgium. Yeah, absolutely. Just finally, Gare, a new qualifying campaign means something else new tonight. VAR. How much of a difference will that make? 
Yeah, I think we kind of all take it slightly for granted that every game has VAR, but if you look back at previous international windows, go back to the Nations League uh, last November, or, or, or all the countries, there was no VAR, and it was kind of a little bit of, I suppose, respite, and I spoke to the players, it, 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 certainly from the Welsh point of view, in camps November and the summertime last year, it was actually quite nice not to have to worry about VAR, go back to the, you know, the good old days, if you want to call it that, but VAR is back in now uh, for these, you, you, yes, it's a FIFA World Cup they're qualifying for, but it's under the all auspices of UEFA. So you've got that to contend with as well. Um, you know, if you're going to look at it from, from Wales' point of view, I think speaking to Rob, uh, Robert Page, he said a draw is not a bad result. He didn't say it was a good result. He just said it's not a bad result. They're going to need maybe some things to go their way this evening. And if VAR does Wales well a favour and can get them off, say, with an away point against Belgium, well, that will be something they'll take. Because let's not forget, what a tough game to start off with. Mm. Away against Belgium. And just to flip it around even more, going into the future, the very final game of this World Cup uh, uh, qualifying campaign for both Wales and Belgium is the reverse fixture, Wales against Belgium in Cardiff. So first and last, it could be interesting.